Donald Trump talks UFOs and a whole lot more. It's time for another UFO news roundup. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Okay, yeah, on a recent interview, Donald Trump opened up about UFOs. Well, I say opened up, but he basically repeated what he has said before, that he's been briefed on it, he's talked to pilots, and the pilots are very credible, and they're seeing these objects, uh, but he's not really a UFO guy, as he says right here. I've never been convinced, even despite that. You know, mm -hmm. I just, for some reason, it's not my thing. It's not his thing. He is not into it. So what does this mean? Uh, Ross Colbert the other day was talking about Donald Trump's life being threatened uh, over UFO disclosure, that he wanted to uh, go public with this stuff, uh, but his life was threatened. Hayim Ashed, uh, Brigadier General Hayim Ashed, co-founder of Israel Space Program, said that there was a galactic federation interacting with world governments. Donald Trump found out about it, wanted to go public, but was talked out of it out of it. So uh, was Ross right? Is Hayim right? Are both of them wrong? There's nothing in this interview to, uh, you know, even hint uh, that any of those wilder stories might be true. Uh, but again, you know, who knows? His public stance on UFOs uh, continues to be the same, that he's talked to pilots, uh, they're credible, uh, he's been briefed on it, uh, you know, people are talking about these objects, but he is just not into it. Could there be a UFO cover-up? Well, he talks about that a little bit too. Is there a chance that one of these orgs is potentially hiding information from you about aliens? Um, I guess so. He guesses so. So yeah, he does leave the possibility open uh, that there is a UFO control group concealing information even from the president. And here's what he had to say about the pilots who are seeing these objects. Perfect people. Okay. And they're not, not you crazy. Know, conspiratorial. Yeah. They're right. not crazy. Yeah. And they tell me stories that they've seen things that you wouldn't believe. These are not people that you would say, There's gee, no so oh, that's no okay. Way. President of the United States. But I said, was who is it? Silent? That's Joe Biden wanting to do an interview. <laughs> uh, so I met with pilots like beautiful Tom Cruise, but taller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Handsome, perfect people. Sir, there was something there that was round in form and going like four times faster than my super jet fighter plane. And I look at these guys and they really mean it. Yeah. And am I a believer? No, I probably, I can't say I am. But there you go. So Donald Trump, again, saying he's not a believer. It's not his thing, but people, credible people are reporting to him that they are seeing these objects. Now, is he hiding some truth from us? Is this all a deception, hiding the reality of UFOs? Would he really have wanted to go public with UFO disclosure, as reported by Ross Coulthard and Haim Ashed, although they have said he was uh, influenced out of that decision uh, in very different ways, although I've talked before about how there is a way or two that you could reconcile those two versions of events. Uh, but would he have wanted to go forward with this? Well, if he had, it would have been a complete 180 from his public stance so far. So I'm inclined to think that no, uh, you know, he wouldn't have come forward with UFO disclosure. I don't know, you know, maybe Ross is correct. Maybe his, that's what his sources are saying. Maybe Ross is being fed disinformation. Maybe Haim Ashed is being fed disinformation. But, you know, it just would have been such a 180 uh, switch from Trump's public stances on UFOs so far. You know, people think that, you know, he could be the disclosure president. Uh, could Joe Biden be the disclosure president? You know, we've actually had a little test of Joe Biden. Uh, you know, he did sign the Schumer Rounds Amendment into law. They, you know, neutered the neutered Schumer, Schumer Rounds Amendment into law. However, at the same time, again, according uh, per Ross Coulthard, uh, Joe uh, Biden is uh, shooting down UFOs, ordering the shoot down of genuinely anomalous vehicles, uh, not balloons, uh, but actual UFOs. Uh, Biden apparently ordered the shoot down of at least one of these objects, and he didn't tell us about it. 
And uh, so, you know, you, you got both sides with Joe, right? He's signing his humor rounds, but he's shooting down UFOs and not telling us about it. Of course, that really opens a can of worms in my mind. It makes me very curious because we keep on hearing about UFO shootdowns, uh, you know, a lot throughout history. Apparently, it's just a fairly common thing. Well, in that particular case, uh, Joe Biden had to get involved. How often does the president have to get involved in directly ordering shootdowns? Why, why was he ordering a shootdown in that case? but not in other cases. Is that because it was over North America? He had to involve NORAD? You know, be very curious what your thoughts are on that. But there do seem to be other shootdowns that have occurred over uh, North America too. So, you know, who knows? Either way, this is what as Trump is saying about UFOs. Uh, I, you know, it is what it is. I think until we get, uh, you know, elements of the disclosure of the, uh, excuse me, of the control group, actually allowing some of this evidence to come out because uh, I do see pro-disclosure stuff within the control group. You know, David Grush's 40 whistleblowers are still alive as far as I know. So that's encouraging to me. So, uh, you know, these guys will, will come forward, you know, one by one, two by two and give their testimony. Will they be allowed to show any of that evidence? I don't think so, but I would love to be proven wrong. Uh, but I do think because there is this pro-disclosure faction within the control group, there are people that are tired of this secret and that think people should be informed. Then there could be other factors uh, besides that. Maybe the beings themselves want disclosure. Uh, so, you know, hopefully some actual evidence, some videos, some even some craft will, will be able to uh, be brought forward to the American people and the people of the world, as, uh, you know, for actual UFO disclosure, or at least something like that, at least, you know, moving the ball forward. And I think then, and only then, when you have the, when you have the control group uh, ready for disclosure, uh, will you get a president going forward with this information? But hey, that's just my take. Uh, you know, I think that the president is only going to do it uh, if the public is ready for it to happen. And that's only going to happen if there's, you know, catastrophic disclosure of some sort uh, or if the control group itself uh, it wants to come forward with this information. Uh, you know, at this point, I'm hoping for catastrophic disclosure. I think that's going to happen before the control group uh, gets its ducks in a row on that. But hey, that's just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Meanwhile, remember that awesome scientific paper that was talking about Atlantis and crypto terrestrials and UFOs? Uh, and a lot of different news media were, were running with that story. Well, it may have been scrubbed from the internet. <laughs> uh, yeah, check this out. Uh, per Richard uh, Geltreich, this valuable Harvard paper is now gone from ResearchGate. The URL doesn't work. Uh, however, he mirrored it on GitHub here. And apparently also this paper still uh, still appears to reside on the Fox News website, uh, you know, after they did their story on it. And of course, uh, Michael Masters, Dr. Michael Masters was one of the co-authors of that paper. Um, very interesting that it, it vanished from the scientific, uh, you know, website that it originally uh, appeared on, ResearchGate. So why did it vanish? Uh, were the authors getting a lot of backlash and so they removed it themselves? Uh, did ResearchGate remove it themselves? Who removed it and why? But at least the paper is still up in some places. Uh, but it's very concerning whether it's a cover up removing it or else it's, you know, people afraid of a backlash. Uh, you know, hard to say which one it is, but either one is not good. But the paper is still up in some places, like I said. So at least there's that. Meanwhile, Stephen Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer, has some strong words against Gary Nolan, actually accusing him of altering uh, data uh, regarding the Atacama body. It got covered up by some charlatans at Stanford and, UC and UCSF. Uh, Dr. Gary Nolan, who I'd entrusted with the genetics, ended up altering the genetics to show that it was a deformed fetus. But we know it isn't. And it's, uh, it was a child, uh, still had uh, growth plates in the bones and the equivalent of a six-year-old child, but it was only about five or six inches big. So it got covered. Okay, so there you go. Uh, Stephen Greer openly accusing Gary Nolan of altering data uh, to support a false conclusion that it was a, a human uh, body.
uh, instead of an inhuman body, which is what Dr. Stephen Greer is saying. And he and one of his producers have come out uh, publicly saying that Dr. Gary Nolan was saying behind the scenes that it was alien. Uh, Gary Nolan at first denied that, and then he said that was just talk. Uh, and I've shown the, the screen uh, screen grabs of those tweets before. Uh, you can go find those. Uh, but yeah, so Gary Nolan kind of admitted to saying that off the record. Uh, but his official stance is that the Atacama uh, body was indeed uh, that of a human. So does he really think that? You know, I don't know. I'm inclined to think that his off the record comments uh, are probably just as valid as his on the record comments. Uh, but did he actually alter data? Uh, you know, that's, that's a bridge too far for me. I, I don't want to believe that. I hope it's not true. So I'm inclined to think that Dr. Greer is getting a little fanciful, uh, in this accusation, but that's just me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Meanwhile, Jay Anderson from Project Unity is talking about orbs and how orbs may be other dimensional. Rather, that's what Oak Shannon had to say. So let's give a listen, uh, to Jay. Well, I'm open mainly to the idea that it's something of a, of a higher topology, a higher dimensional framework. And again, I, I, I was very interested by the fact that Oak Shannon, this guy that's you know running special projects at Los Alamos, was like, our, our working group really feels that this is a higher dimensional presence that's just coming down into our lower dimensional plane. I don't know if anyone here's read the book Flatlands. Uh, he recommended it to me, and it's it's about a three. It's about a world that lives in two dimensional space, so everything's flat in the flatlands, and it's about a sphere that comes into the two D plane. And how is that perceived? And so I think it could be similar with this: is that you're perceiving a slice of what this is. So I've had experience. All right. So it looks like an orb but it's a slice. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Meanwhile, remember the orb that was buzzing the uh, the base jumper? Uh, I thought it was paragliding, but I've been informed that it's base jumping. Uh, and you know, this is a different angle on that same object. Hopefully you can see that, uh, this small object that is buzzing this base jumper. But people are saying, actually, no, it's a drone. And uh, they're saying in really high def, you can tell that's a drone. I couldn't. Fortunately, there is a different uh, camera with different footage showing the same day. And you can clearly see that there is indeed a drone uh, that will appear on the, on the camera in just a second right there. Okay, you can, you can really only see it when it's in motion. But yeah, it's right there where the cursor is circling. Uh, if you can see it. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to make out because it's like the same color as the, as the background. But, uh, but there it is. There is a drone. So that object that we're seeing with the base jumper, uh, unfortunately, is probably debunked. Meanwhile, Russell Crowe says he thinks aliens are coming in 2027. That's right. He was asked about his favorite conspiracy theories, and he says he's really been getting into UFOs lately, uh, and he's been hearing these rumors of beings that are going to arrive in 2027, and he seems to think that that is a possibility. I just love the fact that we have a, a famous actor talking about this stuff now. Uh, you know, I don't know if the beings are coming in 2027. I don't really want to push that agenda uh, or that narrative, you know, but it could happen. It could totally happen, guys. And if the lady shows up in Utah, or if Chris Bledsoe believes the lady is going to show up in Utah, like he says, uh, you know, if we're going to have a goddess or, or something uh, showing up in the cliff in Utah, like Chris Bledsoe believes in 2027, I am getting a tent and I am going out there, guys. Uh, so I would love it if that were true, if that's the case, or if there's some other mass contact event to happen in 2027. Uh, but I do love the fact that people are talking about it even famous actors are talking about 2027. So let me know what you guys think is going to happen in 2027, or do you think it's going to happen in 26, or is it going to be a few more years down the road? Meanwhile, huzzah! <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick says, I am refraining from any further interviews on the topic. Oh man, I am going to miss you, Sean. I am going to miss you so much. I guess we have Tim Phillips to look forward to now. He hasn't been very vocal though, uh, so you know I can't even I can't even call him the lovely Tim Phillips uh, because he's not vocal enough to be lovely. But Sean Kirkpatrick, God bless him, was and is uh, lovely. He will always be lovely. 
uh, going on to reverse engineers uh, as he is now, I think, at Oak Ridge Labs, right? So, uh, yeah, you, you go reverse some good engineers, Sean, and then come back and tell us how UFOs don't exist. Last but not least, behold the sounds of celebration that these storks give out upon the birth of their first egg. Okay, all right, very cool. That is the stork cry of happiness, guys. <laughs> they even like coordinated. That's pretty cool. All right, uh, congratulations, storks. They've got an egg. Uh, let me know what you think about this happy couple and their new offspring and everything else covered in the uh, comments below. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the like button, the bell, and all that kind of good stuff. There's plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.